Today you're going to learn how to clean up the control bar area of Logic Pro. So this is 10.3.1 and your version may look different, but you can certainly still apply the same principles. What I mean by clean up is to replace all these buttons with key commands, with keyboard shortcuts. I'm gonna start with the toolbar and this is going to hopefully make your workflow faster so you can focus on making music and not on moving your mouse around the screen to push the right button. The first one here is track zoom, control Z. This zooms the selected track. This is fantastic for huge templates with hundreds of tracks so that you can only focus on one track that you're working on and the other ones are small and out of the way. Next, we have note repeat. You'll notice that if you hover over the button, you can find out what shortcut has been applied to it. So this is control alt return. And then the next one is spot erase control alt delete. And if you're on a PC keyboard, control alt enter or control alt backspace. Just so you know, I say alt instead of option, but it's the same key. So split by playhead is command T. That one I use all the time. Split by locators. The locators are going to be the cycle range. That is control command T. Or you can use a marquee selection. And you'll notice that not only does marquee have priority over the cycle range, the cycle range doesn't even have to be on for the location to work. It knows it's there and it splits the region anyway. I'm gonna redo that. Command Shift Z so that I can show you join. So I'm going to select all Command A, those regions, and Command J is join. Next we have bounce regions. That's Control B. This brings up the bounce regions in place dialog box, and you can select multiple regions on the same track or on different tracks, and it'll bounce them all into the same audio file. Then we have move to playhead. So I'm going to move the playhead somewhere else and I hit semicolon and then the audio region jumps to wherever the playhead is. Then we have nudge. So the left and right arrows, this is you're nudging left and right, alt left and alt right arrow keys. And if you want to change the nudge value, I have my own shortcut set. I actually don't use this, but I'll show you them anyway. Control alt D is for division, M is for the bar for, or measure, that's how I remember it. T is for tick, S is for sample. The reason I usually leave it on division is because I'm not even looking at this toolbar. I never have it up. I'm always looking at this is my division. And if they're linked, I can just change the division by pushing control up arrow or control down arrow. And so I just change it to a 16th um, and if I, I have this visual feedback, then I don't need to bring up or change the nudge value. I don't even have to worry about what the nudge value is changed to if it's linked to division. So now I can nudge it by quarter notes instead. And it's changing very slowly right now because I'm doing a screen recording, but this works for me. But if you prefer to change the nudge value, then you know how to do that now. If you wanna set your own shortcuts, Alt K will bring up the key commands. So right now the window focus is here. If I press tab, it'll focus the search box. And here you can search for, let's search for track zoom. So there it is. We have a bunch of different kinds of track zooming and there's the one we used earlier. And I'll show you now you can search, let's tab again back into this area. I'll click somewhere else. And if you hit control Z, that was the shortcut for the zooming of the focus track. It goes to the function that is tied to that shortcut. So I'm going to tab out here, command W, because if I command W in this window, it just shows me, oh, that's the shortcut for closing the window. So I got to tab to the search key commands box and let's move on to repeat section. So all of these buttons take the, take the locators from either your cycle range or from your marquee, just like split by locators. So repeat section is control command R. So the 
section that is going to be repeated is again, this is the cycle range. I'm going to keep that there for now. Control command R and the middle section, the middle two bars were repeated. Now, if I use command R, it repeats the entire region. Sometimes that can be useful if you don't want to loop it forever. Sometimes you can just repeat it a number of times. Cut section, so it's going to cut out these two middle bars. Control Command X. And you'll notice that it slid to the left as if it was uh, shuffle left um, drag mode. So this is different than take the marquee region, delete. Then it's omitted, but the silence is left in there. Insert section. This one inserts a section wherever the playhead is. So right now, these two bars should be inserted at measure one. So this is control command V. And the region was pushed over once it was inserted. And I could just go to measure nine, control command V. To bring up this box, I hit the decimal point on the keypad. Um, this may or may not be set for you already. It's just a fast way to navigate. So the insert silence, I'm going to leave these same two measures selected. Control Command Z. Undo that with Command Z. Set locators is next. OK, so this one is Command U. This sets locators without rounding. That means that if I drag this to in between some measures, it'll give me the exact length of this region. If I hit U without command, it rounds to the nearest measure. Sometimes you want this, sometimes you would rather have without rounding. Zoom, that's just Z. Uh, it fills your editing area with the selected region. And then finally on the toolbar, colors. Alt C brings up the color menu, the color palette. So let's get rid of this toolbar. Again, you don't need to know that shortcut because you're never going to see that again. If you memorize all of those shortcuts, they're not that difficult. You just come up with your own mnemonic and before you know it, you'll be using them like a pro. The next one is library. We're going to go over all these ones on the control bar. Now library is Y that's easy. Library ends in Y I is for the inspector. This is the inspector area here. If I push I, it goes away. The help I don't use anymore, but if you're just getting started, you may want this up so that you know what all the things on the screen are, but I don't have a command to it because I don't need it. So eventually you're not going to need it anymore either. So you just get rid of this button altogether and I'll show you how to do that at the end. It's pretty easy. This was the toolbar. And this is the smart controls. So press B and you get smart controls. This track doesn't have anything to control yet, but this one does. I put a Klopfgeist on this software instrument track. So here are the smart controls down here. Next up is the mixer. If you push X, this brings up the mixer. That one's easy to remember. And then E is for editor. That's the next icon here. Editor is whatever editor is relevant to that region. There are no regions here. It brought up the piano roll anyway, which is nice and considerate. But if I move over to the audio track, it brings up the audio editor. If I had a MIDI region, when I move back to the software instrument track, it would again bring up the piano editor. No matter what editor you have up, Let's say I have the file audio file editor, or if I have the track, the, the audio track editor, doesn't matter. The E key will just close whatever editor is open or reopen the last used editor for that region. Next we have rewind and forward. This is going to be comma and period moves by one measure at a time. And if you hold shift and you can think of the greater than or less than signs, that will make it easy to remember. This is your fast forward and fast rewind. It moves by eight measures at a time. Then we have play and stop. This is easy. Like most DAWs, it's the space bar. 
record is going to be R. Or if you're another way to record, if you're on a software instrument track or a MIDI track is shift R. This is capture as recording. You can of course still use R, but I'll show you that right now. I don't have any audio linked to uh, QuickTime right now. It's not routed there, so you won't hear anything. But I just played some notes on my keyboard and I hit shift R and now this recording popped up after I was done. That's just another way of recording. So you'll also notice now I press E and the relevant editor will pop up for the MIDI notes now instead. The next one is this LCD area. So this is, so right click anywhere in a blank space. I have it set to custom. This information is stuff that I like to see. It's up to you really. It may be bigger than these other options here, but um, to me, it's worth it. Um, this information is valuable to me, so I leave it. And once you get rid of all these other buttons that you don't need, you're gonna find out that that this real estate here, this space is really not so much at a premium and you can just make this as wide as you need it to display the relevant information. Next we have cycle. C is the cycle range to turn that on and off. And then we have replace. I don't use replace really, but it's useful for me to see it. So I actually leave it up there. I don't ever click on it, but if you press the slash button on the numpad, that'll turn it on and off. So I like to have it up there just in case I accidentally hit it so that I'm not accidentally replacing things that I don't mean to. So just visual feedback. Tuner, I don't use either, but if you do, you can come up with your own shortcut. Again, Alt K to get to the key commands window, um, but I'm gonna get rid of this too at the end. This is solo, not just any solo, this is solo lock. This is control S. It'll solo the selected region. If you just press S without solo, that solos a track, regardless of its selection status. So control S is solo lock. Next, we have the count in and the click, which is shift K for count in and K for click. These ones I actually leave up here as well just because I find that it's nice to see it. I don't have to hit play or hit record to find out whether or not these are enabled. I can just take a quick glance up to the control bar and they're still there and I can find out immediately if it's enabled or not. Last we have these four are the list editors, the notepad, loops, and the file browsers. So D is lists and I have my own key commands for each of these lists. I have all the modifiers plus E, M, T, and C I think of as common time. You can do whatever you want, but um, this works for me. And these are all the lists. So no matter what list you have open, if you push D again, it goes away. Just like with the editor, when you push E, no matter what editor was open, it'll go away or come back. The notepad is, for me, it's Alt, Command, P. And the loops are O, just O. There's my MB snare drum loop that I made in the custom Apple loops video. And lastly, we have the file browser, that's F. That's also easy to remember. And I can't find any way to have a key command for media and all files. That doesn't bother me. I just leave this on project. And if I need to get any other file, I'll either click on these tabs, but most often I will just open up a finder window and that works for me better. So I'm gonna start getting rid of these icons now. And this is just a quick overview. I didn't really go too deep into the functions of each of these things, but this is just showing you a way that you can speed up your workflow using the key commands. And the side effect is that it looks nicer. There's something to be said, I think, for having a clean workspace and uh, being able to work efficiently and without distraction. So this is this is what it looks like. This is this is my typical setup for 
the uh, control bar and um, I prefer it this way. And, and I can even, if I need to, sometimes I'll bring up the, just for visibility, I can bring up the giant beats display and I usually size it down just so I'm not in the way of these menus if I need these menus. And then if you have the giant time display or something over here, you, you can use this space now because you don't need those buttons because all those buttons, you can have a key command that you've memorized for it. So if you liked this video and this was, I hope this was helpful for you, please consider subscribing. Otherwise, I'm Cap. stay tuned.